come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. The podcast coming your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're taking over the world. One podcast listener at a time. You're helping us right. out with that. So we're like infecting them. Yes. Yeah. They're like zombies. It's exactly. contagious. Exactly. Like it. that. Yep. And uh, the way that you infect other people is by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All Just cough that. in their general direction. Yep. Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. <laughs> Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And we want to tell you about a special contest that we have going on this week. Michaela, why don't you tell the kids at home about what they can win? It's that most magical time of year. Listener request month. Oh, damn, yeah, I thought I was, was, was going to say Pepsi points. Oh, uh, Pepsi points. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do freak show points. It's freak definitely show. not oh. a scam. <laughs> yeah, so definitely not a scam. don't just give us your credit card number, social security. Mother's maiden name. Uh, first pet street you grew up on. All yep. those. Yep. That'd be great. You know, first car you drove, make and model, mm-hmm. color, maybe. Yeah. All that stuff. Where you met your love. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to find this on uh, our social media. So Did we say what it was? Or did yeah, I listen, listen to request month. Listen yeah. to request month. So, is coming up in January. Yeah, yes. but now it's time to submit your picks. Yeah, that's right. So for all you people who've ever written into this show, I mean, like you guys should do this. Mm-hmm. Now's your chance. Mm-hmm. That's this right. We're gonna pick four of them, or yeah. you're gonna actually you're, you're gonna vote next week. You're gonna yeah. come back and you're gonna vote on the ones that you submit this week. So it's important yep. this week. Send us. Your choice. Try to keep it to like two or three max. Uh, three max. Yeah. That's all you get. You yeah. get three because otherwise we'll just be bombarded with shit. And, yeah. And, and then we'll just throw out all your suggestions. I'm kidding. Yeah. But no, three. Three is all you get. All right. You so, can be nice to us. You can punish us. It is truly up to you. We do not get to pick. No, you so, all pick all of these. So, so. find me anything. The, there's, we'll, we'll have a graphic on our social medias or you can just uh, send it directly to us. Um, so I guess we should tell people right now at the mm-hmm. head of the show where they can find us on social media on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us your suggestions directly. At Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. You added more to that. Yeah. Or at Instagram at Saturday Night yep. Freak Show. Tonight, we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. Yes. What monument of cinematic history... Of of the of the horny late 90s. Yes. As it were. This we might watched. be Mount Everest of the horny late 90s. It's a peak. Yeah. It's definitely a peak. Uh, uh, that's there. basic instinct. I yeah, mean, okay, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. But that's just kind of, it's what you grew well, up with. We watched. Now, now I'm going to do a letterbox list called the Horny Mountains of the Horny Mountains 90s. Of the 90s. <laughs> and then I'm going to I'll put I'll put like Wild Things Everest and then I'll go all the way down I'll Kilimanjaro all that shit okay. like give me all the mountains. Okay. I like it. <laughs> okay. So what right. so what got us horny tonight? To <laughs> 1998's Wild Things, a staple of every young millennials. I think so. Young yes, male millennials growing this up. This is a like coming of age rite of passage movie it right feels like it yeah. to me that's how important it is to me I, I assumed that was like it seemed like that was my cultural experience as a kid it really so, was it felt like a, well it was definitely an awakening but it, it felt yes. like it this movie felt like it permeated where did you guys yes. see it had a sleepover Okay. I mean, most likely yeah. this was the secret. It was like, the, like don't, don't our mom can't know this... we rented Wild Things. She thinks we got Mary Kate and Olsen's movie or whatever. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. That, that, that kind of switcheroo. Yeah. I probably, because my brothers were older than me, they probably rented it. Oh, and yeah. I, uh, that's that's how I got a lot of my uh, early education, we'll say. If we're doing a pie chart of people who saw this, like it, how they saw it, it's, it's going to be 50-50 older brother sleepover. Yeah. Or even the Venn diagram will be older brothers that had sleepovers. <laughs> I mean, you know? Probably. so But yeah, older brothers expose you to so much, don't they? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was on HBO a lot. Like I a bet. Lot. Yeah, because yeah. it seems like everybody's familiar with this movie. I mean, you would be because you know certain things about it. There's like a, there's going to be a threesome with uh, right. yep. Campbell yes. and Denise Richards. I didn't know that when I saw it because I saw it in the theater. Oh, like, wow. Was that a surprise? Weekend. So what drew you to it? Like, how was this? Well, see, this I don't is, remember how it was advertised. I didn't. See, this is what I meant to do before the show, and I didn't do it. I wanted to watch the trailer because, oh, yeah. you know, I saw everything that came out. Basically, I was, uh, you know, hanging around movie theaters. I saw mm-hmm. everything. And so I knew that this one was playing. And so I went, you know, it was a new thing. And I knew... Nev Campbell, obviously from Party Five and from Scream yep. and the Craft, and I uh, and the, the was that, had that been out? Yeah, the so Craft was, came out the same year as Scream. 
Yeah. Okay. We so, talk, yeah. So Nev big Campbell, is right? And then high. you got Denise Richards, who I you know, like noticed in Starship Troopers. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, Matt Dillon and Kevin Bacon are in it. And it's like, okay, it's a thing. When I saw this movie in a movie theater, right, I go in there. And there's a bunch of teenage girls in the theater. And oh. I'm like, oh man, I'm in, I'm in the wrong. Like, okay, what was going on? But when you're watching and then this a movie, row of dudes in trench coats right behind. Yeah, no, there was, no, there was. I, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was like the second week. People, so, but so Colin yeah. was the only dude in a theater. Well, I was the dude got in, out. in the trench coat. Yeah, <laughs> but I just remember the experience was like you're sitting there with like all these teenage girls watching this movie, and you're like, okay, so I'm in like the wrong movie. And then as it gets going, you're like, this is shot. From a guy's point of view. Absolutely. And this is, I guess, something that we'll talk about as we go through this movie. But like, I'm like, oh, I'm in the right theater. They're in the wrong theater. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know. But I mean, everybody mm-hmm. seems to obviously like enjoy it. This mm-hmm. is a, a thing that crosses. Uh, it feels it was like a, it. A, yes. a, Of the moment, you know, for a generation. This is the movie that reaches across the aisle. Colin, yeah. Right? <laughs> it does because, yeah. But everyone, yeah, because I mean, uh, Nev Campbell's popularity at this point. So mm-hmm. she's a thing you go see. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, like you said, Denise Richards. She got. No well, I had not seen Tanny and the T-Rex. Yeah. And the T- Teenage yeah, T Rex. Yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah, I, I had seen it a couple of times, but I had seen the, the much heavily edited version. Yeah, yeah. Tammy and the T Rex. Yeah. Um, Not Tanny and the Teenage T Rex. Right, right. Yeah. right. It was otherwise known. Wait, did you know that tonight's movie actually does put Denise oh, Richards on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame? Thank you, MF Mad. Thank you, for man. your continued contributions to the show. Uh, Valentine. Valentine. Yes, that That's was the, the other one. Valentine, Tammy and the T Rex, and now. Yeah, oh, there you go. That Bam. is. That, we have that might be the Starship Denise. Troopers. I was going to say uh, that might be the Denise Richards Holy Trinity, but then I remembered Starship Troopers. Sorry, so yeah, we can't forget Starship yeah. Troopers. But that mm-hmm. so the the rhombus, the the rhombus, the Holy Rhombus. <laughs> yes. yes, the Denise Richards, Richards rhombus. Holy Rhombus. Yes. yes. <laughs> so the movie is directed by John McNaughton, who we would know from uh, Henry Portrait of a Serial. Oh, a very different movie. A very different movie. Yeah. I, it's a disturbing movie. I have it at home. I have not watched it yet. It's, it's a very it's disturbing movie. But, I mean, yeah. it's one of those That's movies I that it. I would warn you is very yeah. disturbing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when that movie came out, it caused a, um, a ruckus. like an underground, a ruck. Yeah, there you go. I was going to say a sensation. That's the wrong word. A, a ruckus. ruckus is a better word. Could you describe the ruckus, sir? Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, there's that whole <laughs> should people be watching this? Who's the sick minds who made this kind of thing? It's glamorizing it, all that kind but of talk. But I didn't think that it did. No, maybe, I don't. Maybe, I don't think so. I don't know if that's a, a conversation for another future episode. I don't <laughs> know, but I mean, it's a very, it's a very, um, it's an off-putting movie. Yeah, very grim. But it is like a portrait of a like a real life serial killer. He's not, but it's Michael yeah. Rooker. It's very good. Yeah. Um, I, I can only imagine the intensity coming from Michael Rooker. Yeah. Yes, Mm -hmm. but you would not, I don't think, you know, look at that movie and go like, John Naughton, yeah, we should hire him for uh, Wild Things. You know, I mean, it's like, what? (laughs) The tone is very different. Right. Well, he was looking for, I mean, that's the thing. He was looking for a more commercial movie to do at this point in his career. I have not seen anything from him that would suggest that Henry, I mean, like the Henry portrait of a serial killer is so different from everything else that he's done. Yeah. You know? That it's like, how did you go from, I mean, it must have been like, you know, I'm doing this to get into the movies as a Chicago filmmaker, right? That, you know, was kind of, and I don't know, like, I know he did a movie that's kind of well regarded on like, you know, the far cult circle, which is called The Borrower, which I think also has Tom Towles in it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, 1991. And then he did a movie that kind of ties into this one, which I saw in the theater and it was called Mad Dog and Glory. And it had Robert De Niro, Bill Murray, and Uma Thurman in it. And I thought at that time that that was like the best Robert De Niro performance that I had ever seen. Wow. Because Bill Murray's the gangster, uh-huh. right? And 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 Robert De Niro is not. And uh, and sounds then, good already. So then we have Bill Murray then appears in Wild Things. So that's the connection. It's like well, he had worked with him before. You know, the right. two guys had worked together, and so. They're going to work on this. And then I think John McNaughton then did a bunch of like TV. If you watch Masters of Horror, he he did one one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, This this looks familiar. That's the bar where the, the, the poster. Yeah, I've poster. definitely yeah. seen that poster before. Yeah, that's but not very the movie? No. Okay. But I've, I've heard it of it. But yeah, yeah, I've definitely seen that. Interesting. Um, but did he do, I mean, I don't know if he's still working. It seems when the I look. The last thing he did, uh, the last thing he directed was The Harvest in 2013. 
which I confess I've never heard of. Yeah. There was a pretty well, good got interview. Michael Shannon in it, I think. All right. Um, Joe Bob Briggs had him on for the uh, the um, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer episode, and there's uh. a pretty good interview there. Uh, if you're interested, that's on uh, the Shutter Channel, which is not sponsoring us, but no, but they uh, <laughs> which we seem to mention a lot. Um, okay, so this is 1998. Yes. Uh, Wild Things. Who else is in this movie? We've mentioned Bacon Dong. Yeah, Bacon, Bacon Dong. Bacon Dong. Movie. Yep. Uh, we said Matt Dillon. We said, uh, um, what's his name? Robert Wagner. Robert Wagner's from in From Heart to Heart. <laughs> <laughs> was Heart to Heart. I yes. just saw that poster the other day. Yeah. Did he Some kill reason. Natalie Wood? Should we get into that? Okay, we're not going to get into that. Ooh, so, that's our like true crime <laughs> spin off. <laughs> That'll be a Patreon. <laughs> but thing. my opinion. Yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah, I think we we just we just definitely discussed that off. Mic. The more I, the more I l- learn about that situation, the more I'm like, oh, he for sure did. Yeah, I never remember. Well, it was a tragic, the third uh, party, yeah. right? Um, That's a, that is a tragedy. She was. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then uh, Teresa Russell is also in this movie. Yeah, recognize Teresa Russell. She looks so familiar, but I think it's just because she looks like Kim Cattrall is what it is. Yeah. Because I looked up her IMDb and I was like, this is not ringing a bell. Yeah. I was trying to like, because I, I know who Teresa Russell is, but um, the if you, you know, I lived through the 80s and there was a movie called Black Widow mm. um, with Deborah Winger that she was in that I think was kind of like the Teresa Russell movie. But then in the 90s, she did a movie called Whore, which was advertised as if you can't say it, see it. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. Which was not as good as the title suggests. I mean, Damn. I don't know. It was like a gritty slice of life, you sure. know, real yeah. world kind of thing. It gets you know, your thing. attention. Yeah. Poor. Is she a good. Oh, wait. Actually, she has been on this show before because uh, she did the American dubbed voice of one of the characters in Tenebrae. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, well, bravo. We only need one more to put her on the wall. There yeah. you go. Um,. I always think that Teresa Russell is a terrible actress. Am I off on this? Like every line that she gave in this movie, every line reading Sam Lombardo. I like, I just can't. It's over the top. <laughs> it is, but I love it. It feels very soap opera. <laughs> I do. Yeah, but yeah. I think like maybe I, that might have been the intention of casting her in this to add that. Cause it feels real soapy, real. Yeah. Real dramatic. I think she knows exactly what this movie is and everyone else is taking it too seriously, is what I think. Because this movie's kind of campy and ridiculous. Bill like, Murray is not taking yeah. his part but seriously. But all the <laughs> other leads are very, like, serious. I know, like, watching it this time, you know, you're watching those scenes. Well, to me, I guess that mm-hmm. interest was, uh, you know, Bill Murray, who's, you know, bringing weird choices, choices. into oh, every scene my God. playing against Matt Dillon who's yes. like you know I mean I guess basically one of the leads Kevin yeah. uh, Bacon is actually top credited mm-hmm. yeah because he also movie. produced the movie <laughs> yeah. coincidence mm-hmm. uh, Kevin Bacon I don't uh, this is his first mo- movie he ever produced um, he said when he was reading this script he thought it was the trashiest thing he'd ever read but then he said is like but then Every other couple pages, there was another surprise. Yeah. And he's like, it kept me going. He's like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do this. This but is not a boring knew. movie. No, 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 no. Because even like the, like the side of the cops, like a Bacon's partner in this, she's got a something What's about her. What's her name? I will look Daphne. it up. She, Daphne something vague. Oh, uh, really? You th- mm, I find her to be terrible. Yeah. She has no emotion. She's just flat. She seems to have no chemistry with anybody she's in a scene with. She just kind of has like no emotion. And everyone else in this movie has a lot of emotion. They really so. do. I, but the, what I like about her, I like the it's the tone of her voice. For some reason, it it gets me. Mm-hmm. It feels old actressy. She's but she's shot that way. It's it's this is like Florida Noir basically. It's yeah. like a, it's yeah, mm-hmm. we'll call it Floir. Can we say? That? <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. It should start using it. F- yeah. Floir. Floir. I mean, is this a subgenre that has more than one movie in it? Wild Things <laughs> two, three, and four. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. So, no, I'm so, sure there's more Everglades. Oh yeah, yeah. Mean, out there. mean, not mean streets. Means the mean season. Yeah, with, mean season. Uh, oh yeah, Kurt Russell. Russell. That's a good movie. Because I was uh, saying, you know how they do those multi-pack DVDs? If you're doing the floor, multi-pack, 
Other than the wild things, we like, what else is going to be in there? We could pick. Yeah, yeah you we could so? in there. Let me think about that. <laughs> Are you, yeah. This uh, is going to be your project for next summer. We're going to do floor <laughs> movies all floor next summer. Movies. Yeah, there's uh, um, I got a Red of, Dragon, I think, kind of fits in that a little it, yeah. bit. Mm. Yeah, that's right, because they certain do that parts. Yeah. They only ever glaze and everything. Just certain parts. But there's we'll, better examples. We'll just watch that a season of Dexter. <laughs> yeah. There's that. Invasion well. USA. No, okay. Yeah. So, Invasion uh, USA is not a noir. That's true. Oh, um, there's something about Mary. Another, I think that's another Florida <laughs> oh, one. Yeah. With Matt Dillon. Every time I see Matt Dillon, I just see him with the big veneers going. <laughs> I know, because like what Mary. happened to, I know he was um, he was in that Lars von Trier movie, which I guess the, is also a rough The House watch. of Jack yeah. built? Yeah, 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 I watched that. that. Fucked up. Yeah. I wanted to love that movie, but it did not want to love me. It just yeah, there was something about it. It was right. holding me away, you know? It, yeah, because I was really looking forward to seeing yeah. that movie. And then I saw him, I'm just like, huh. But he's great in it. He's great. Okay, is that the most recent thing that we know that he's done? I think I'm so. sure he's been in other stuff, yeah. but like of, of of a high enough profile that yeah. I think that's the biggest one lately. I haven't uh, one night at McCool's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but this I is kind out. of all these people that we're talking about who are in it are in like I don't know if uh, they're prime, but they're still like you know they're like hot the, commodities. Yeah, because I think there's point. something about Mary would come out the same year. Right, and then put Matt Dillon back on the right because he was Rumble Fish, right? And the outsider, yeah, he's an outsider yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, now we can do comedy. Who wrote this movie? Do you know? Uh, well, oh, I just looked him up. I have this him right feels here. like it should be based on like a VC Andrews book or something, right? It feels Stephen like Peters, one of those. uh, who also wrote a movie called Dead Center in 1993. He wrote the novel. Uh, of which the TV movie The Park is Mine is based on. I saw The Park is Mine with, with Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. Jones. That's a yeah, crazy. It's an HBO movie. Yeah, he that's takes crazy. over Central Park. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's crazy. Um, so is that like the original like Richard Jewell type movie then? It felt yeah. It felt to me like Die Hard was why they gave that the green light at ah, the time, yeah. or like Rambo. You know, it was like he he was a veteran who had grievances and took over the park right until someone listened to him huh. uh the wolves in 1996 these are things he's written uh wild things in 98 uh he was he was a character in wild things scenes from the cutting room floor oh wow. okay. just gotta be like the making yeah of. he's like a lawyer or something in the background mm-hmm. yeah and then just characters in wild things and wild things two and three um he wrote some of the emmys the last thing he wrote was... So this is what he's known for. This is yeah. it. Yeah, okay. basically. Well, it. I was just kind of curious where the script came from and, you know, eventually it ends up with John uh, McNaughton. Yep. And they're like, okay, it uh, has, we're going to say the movie has a, uh, even Amazon, uh, which we watched it on, uh, tells us it has an atmosphere. That is one <laughs> of the, like, the key words yeah, is atmospheric. atmosphere. Atmospheric. <laughs> Um, very, I, can, I can feel it every time I hear the music, the yeah, score. Of yeah. This movie. Um, yeah. This is, if you've never been to Florida and you want to know what Florida's like, this is a documentary. This, like, this it does is, feel like is, I could, yeah, I could the, smell Florida. The sweltering yeah. kind yeah. of uh, and kinda, muggy heat, you yeah. know, kind of mm-hmm. comes off. Where yeah. everything's, there's just a, a, a little bit of sand on everything, no matter yep. where you walk. And everything's sand. wet from condensation. Yeah, yeah. everybody was a little, a little sweaty in this movie. The score yeah. is by. George S. Clinton. Yes, George S. Clinton. Yeah, and it's um, how would you describe it? Atmospheric, <laughs> twangy. It is like backwoods. Yeah, kind he's got of like, like slide guitar yeah. or something in there, yeah, and there's a that, bongo and type and beat kind of. And one of those things where it's like you drag a, a drumstick on the wood thing, it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's that, that's a like that stuff. Well, I, I guess oh, like it, a shaker isn't. Yeah, there? like yeah. a. It's not it like feels, a Cajun sound, but it's definitely like a, it feels uh, like, that, like, like the Nolans. Yeah, mm-hmm. the 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 sweltering parts of the USA. That's where the yeah. music comes from. Think of from. a sweating alligator. Yeah, I yeah. think that's it. There's has, so many alligator shots in this movie. Has, has one of the greatest shooting. opening title shots uh, of just an alligator yep. like poking yep. its yep. eyes up out of the water, and mm-hmm. then wild things is displayed across the top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it has this. The music also has like a a, a female vocal. Um, you said it was kind of like Enya, yeah, you know, yeah. But I mean, the the score, I guess, like stands out. Like yeah. this is the this is the guy who did the score for Mortal Kombat. He didn't do the <laughs> dun, 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 but, no, you know, no. the actual score for the movie and a bunch of other mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, the Apple, which we we covered Hell on yeah. the show, indeed. Um, it fits okay. this movie very well. The score. So, I mean, I guess. I don't know. I was going to say, should we should we talk about movie threesomes just to start this out? Because <laughs> sure. I mean, like, if you're if you're that's why you're watching the movie. Right. Let's be honest. That this is, is what why we people know watch. about. Let's just get to it at things. the top. Yeah. Um, this is 1990. Okay, so if you've been watching like you know 
French foreign films or whatever. I mean, <laughs> this like is this not is not out of the ordinary. This is not out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, but I think to American moviegoers, uh, this is scandalous as fuck. Oh, yeah. I remember, and this is like how jaded I am, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, when when I saw Bram Stoker's Dracula, and that was in 1992, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, oh, the Brides of Dracula seduced Jonathan mm-hmm. Harker. Um, it was other people who told me like, yeah, there's like a the, like a, a foursome in that movie, and you're like. Oh yeah, I guess there was. You yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. It made an impression for a lot of people right. that in a major theatrical Hollywood movie, oh. you know, there's like three women and one guy yeah. in, in this, mm-hmm. you know, semi sex scene. Sure. Mm-hmm. So it was only a mo- matter of time until we got, uh, you know, Denise Richards, Neff Campbell, and uh, Matt Dillon. I think that's what makes it so iconic even to this day is that it is three extremely famous people yeah and two of them at like the peak of their career it's that's not it's, like, it's not i'm working my way up right so i'm doing this sleazy low budget movie it's right. it's i could choose to pass on this but i didn't yeah yeah because i mean i assume they were attracted well i mean maybe that's the thing it's like are they attracted to the script or just the people who are in it or like you know it's like this is a project that denise richard do, does appear topless mm-hmm. nev campbell i think i heard had some kind of a uh, contract was, writer. She was still working on Party of Five, and oh. in her contract, they would not allow her to do nudity. She had strict no nudity clause. So sense. did Kevin Bacon. Mm-hmm. But when reviewing, this was the best shot, and he was like, oh, "Okay, use it." Yeah. He, he yeah. called the director, and he's like, "Do I look good?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yeah, fucking use it." And apparently, it caused a stir here in America. The Europeans didn't say a goddamn word about it. Right. I See, remember it was, it was in about. the press. Yeah. But so was um, Bruce Willis. Um, color in, in color of red, right? The no, color of night. Color of night. Yes. But both of these movies come from an era which we've talked about before in Hollywood, which will never be seen again. Oh, I don't know. I if it, probably, uh, it doesn't feel like it's ever going to be seen again right now. Yeah. We don't know how good we had it in the 90s. glossy and just... Everything was erotic in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Even there was... A, I mean, Ben Affleck, little Affleck showed up for like half a second in the movie. Yeah, and that People was made nuts. such a big deal of. Like yeah. in Gone Girl, you see it for like a split second when he's... It literally blink and you miss it yeah. like shot. And that well, was, was like basically headlines. what this was... Uh, this this is you much know. longer than the. Yeah, I saw balls. Than the, oh, yeah, huh. than right. the scene in Gone Girl. Gone Girl is like it's literally him just like running into that shower. <laughs> but I think this was the first cinematic dong I ever saw. I'm pretty oh, sure it oh, was. Wow. Oh, Ooh. so this is why Wild Things is on the, the <laughs> yeah the, the card. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 uh, the horny hills of the horny the horny, the horny, mountains. The horny mountains. The horny mountains yeah. of the nineties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a it was a weird time. Uh, that, you know, uh, I guess like mainstream uh, cinematic sex, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Went big, uh, you know, because it just seemed like there were all these movies and respected, you know, performers being in them. Mm-hmm. Although I suppose Sh- uh, Sharon Stone is the most famous of mm-hmm. the group, you yes. know, of people who are in them. Madonna had to get in with the uh, body of evidence, right. you know, and, um, I totally forgot where I was going with that. But 90s was, erotic uh, thrillers. Yeah. We're talking about the, the the peaks and valleys of this mountain range. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Teresa Russell also Saw in this movie peaks. gets, yeah. Uh, yeah, she also contributes some nudity to the oh, film. Yeah, yeah. But it is not, I mean, I guess the reputation that the movie has is that it's kind of like, because we also, you know, had Skinamax. Yeah. You know, Cinemax yeah. late at night. Um but you had to have the premium channels unscrambled for to see that. Yeah. This I could go to the movie theater and see. This was yeah, feature film yeah. versions of this kind of stuff. Um I know where I was going with it. The the this movie could not be made post me too. True or false? Uh no. I don't think this movie could be made just because for a, a, a number of reasons, that well, being one of them, but like I think it could be made. You're just not going to get the stars like you had in this. I think you think it'd be like a lifetime movie, like it's made it for TV more, movie. I think, well, I think it ends up more like the sequels probably where you get people that, you know, because um, there was, what's her name from the it crowd. And she's in wild things too. I believe mm-hmm. I forgot her fucking name. I'm going to look it up. Cause she was, like diamonds in the wild things, diamonds in the rough. That's the third one. I believe yeah. wild it's things. Four, foursome, foursome must be yeah, the fourth yeah. one. It's just wild things too. Probably. Yeah, um, I think so. Let's... But I guess, you know, because the whole movie is predicated around Susan a Ward. Oh, her. Susan Ward was in a whole bunch of these movies. She's in the new uh, Shannon Tweed? Kind of, yeah. I don't think <laughs> it was not as prominent or as well-known, but 
I, I always notice her showing up in kind of these low budget uh, HBO movies where yeah, this shit happens. Everything gets sexy. So but this like, is like where there was always, you know, you had the big feature film ones, but in the 90s, we also had video stores. Mm-hmm. And yes. video store shelves were full of the With Shannon Western Tween doors, yeah. and uh, Tanya Roberts yes. uh, erotic thrillers. Yep. You know, everybody was cranking them ones, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what's, what do we get? We got uh, Ben Affleck. That's the last kind of erotic thriller. Actually, was, yeah. Ben Affleck was in the last erotic thriller that I saw. With that Anna one. De Armas yeah. Yeah. Deep Water. No, what was it called? The, the Deep was it deep water? It, deep, that doesn't maybe. sound right. Man, but I saw deep it. was in it. Wasn't I actually it? liked deep. it. It was an Adrian Lyne movie. He like came back after the director after he, he did uh, fatal uh, um, fatal attraction. He did nine and a half weeks. Okay. Right. He directed this movie with uh, Affleck and. Deep uh, water. Deep water. Yeah, deep yeah. Water. Was it? Yeah. yeah Holy deep shit. It's called deep water. Okay. Where where Ben Affleck loves snails. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did There's... you watch this movie? No. We discussed this. That you need I have not to watch watched this movie. it. I've heard. I've seen all <laughs> the, the sexy memes. snail movie. Yeah, the sexy <laughs> snail movie. It feels I, yeah. like a movie that would have been made in the nineties, yeah. yeah. except it has that kind of. It looks like a modern. I love movie. that. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Um, I, but even that didn't get to theaters. No. That was like straight Hulu, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. yeah. I know. See? I know. There's a shame. Prudes. I, yeah, like yes. I said, we America's become puritanical prudes in cinema. Like overnight, it seems like it happened. It just snuck up on us because we were all like, man, Marvel movies are dope. And the next thing we knew is like, wait, <laughs> when was the last time I saw a sex scene in a movie? You yeah. know, like. You just wait. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get it turned upside down. We'll have fucking hardcore sex scenes in Marvel movies at some point. I'm like, fine. Like, That's, That's, I'm fine with that. Like. That's kind of what right? I want. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have to. It's yeah. The boys. That's right? the boys. That's why out. I watch the boys. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess maybe that's the thing that I kind of, you know, like I know post me too the the um, the movie industry has kind of moved into, OK, we're going to do less of this because, it, you know, I don't know. What, what is their thinking? It excites men and, you know, inspires them in ways that are socially in, in, unacceptable or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that that's it, but one reason it seems like, yeah. you know, now when you have a movie with a sex scene in it, it's like, well, we we have to have a woman direct it from a woman's perspective. We have to get intimacy coordinators mm-hmm. and all of this stuff because intimacy it's like, okay, we're going to do. Oh, yeah. You no. know about the intimacy? No. Coordinator? What is an inti- intimacy coordinator? Is this like you put your leg here? Yes. Yeah. You put your arm here. Yes. Oh. Yeah. It's to make sure everyone's comfortable. There's nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah. This it's, is. No, that's fine. To everyone's uh, benefit to have one. Yeah. It's it's also it also protects the studio too. It's oh, it's, yeah. it's, I'm, it's I'm all down I for it's the, it's yeah. like having a lawyer to speak to cops is what it is. You know, it's that yep, kind so of they, everything you know? is very choreographed, mm-hmm. and not that it wasn't. I don't think before because I remember you know um, interviews with Paul Verhoeven mm-hmm. on Basic Instinct where mm-hmm. you know they were talking about the embarrassment of going like okay well can you lick her nipple a little mm-hmm. bit more you know or, yes you know, if you have a professional <laughs> right. who facilitates that you know yeah, yeah it makes it easier like no no other nipple right yeah, 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 yeah. and i'm sure like i'm sure if actors continuously work with like the same group or the same type of intis- intimacy coach it probably develop they develop a good relationship and it makes everything go smoother yeah mm-hmm. Or you get people like Frank Langella who are just like, this is crap. Yeah. And then they end up uh, mm-hmm. getting uh, uh, fired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, maybe I didn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you'll have but to look at it. Think, We're not going to, I don't I think know. That's an open case. So, okay, yeah. but, uh-huh. so I think this movie, if it were made now, like we said, it would be like a lower budget, like Lifetime, Netflix movie, whatever. It would be like, remember when we watched The Boy Next Door? Mm. And remember how they aged him up to be like, oh, he was held back a year. So he's actually right. 18. They, they would not be high schoolers like they right. are in this movie. They yeah. would be in college, at least, I would say, probably. Yeah. I would think that would be the biggest issue with this movie well, now, would be the age of the girls more than anything. It might be. Well, I, I agree that that would be a thing. But I think a bigger issue to making this movie now is the idea that um, someone can make a rape claim that may not be true. Yeah. Because yeah. now we're like, right. you, you know, you, oh, you, yeah. you know, I forgot about that. Part yeah. We yeah, did yeah. So much twisty turny. Yeah. After yeah. That part in the movie, because like, there's like four movies in here in this movie, you know, yeah, like we it's, get a, we it's get a court movie, four seasons of television, you know, does the movie change protagonists during the movie? I mean, I guess that's the thing. Like, do you feel it? Because watching it this time, I was like, it does change protagonists as it goes. Yeah, I, I feel like 
it, it does but it i also feel like they all kind of you kind of go with the attitude like they're all terrible you know yeah, that was kind I, of how like i felt about it the, the cops kevin bacon and all them kevin like, bacon that i think he becomes the central protagonist of the second half the 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 second portion mm-hmm. of the movie what are we saying it's thirds mm-hmm. uh yeah. I mean, you could cut it to like court is like the halfway mark of this movie it feels like yeah because and then after that everything starts well changing. the beginning of this movie you know i mean setting this stuff up so this is a movie with a lot of twists and turns and we are going to spoil it if you haven't mm-hmm. seen it so uh this is your spoiler warning right now yeah there's no video game kid at the end of this but <laughs> no no yeah was that erotic i don't remember yeah it tried yeah. to be well it tried, him and Di- he was a be. prostitute for diane lane in that movie diane lane, that's yeah. who it was. i was yeah. like who was it in that um so the movie um Starts with, we're introduced to Matt Dillon as the educator of the year at a Florida school. Sam he, Lombardo. Yeah. Yep. Great name. And, but the way that the movie portrays him, like, I had no doubt that this guy was being railroaded, right? He is, I mean, like, the first shot of, I think, like, that introduces him as his point of view as he's walking through the, the auditorium. Yes. And mm-hmm. every single Everyone's girl in that class is just like... You know, it's like it's him, right? You can hear him whispering, he's like, you see his eyes, they're Mm -hmm. beautiful, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he or the one student who has, um, not his eye, she's it, it, whatever, she's like fawning over him, is Denise Richards, Mm -hmm. right? Yes, and so she's doing everything she can to seduce this man, everything she has got that sexy look down, Mm -hmm. like Pat, and she's using it a lot at Mm -hmm. the beginning of this movie. Oh, yeah. We should mention first words of the movie are Denise Richards saying "fuck off." Yeah, so love it. Fuck is the what first a, word in this what a movie. great way to I start. I wonder if they were just like, "We're gonna cut that, 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 and that." Yeah. I want the first line yeah. to be "fuck, fuck off." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right when you're, yeah, yeah. Um, makes sense. There's a lot of refrain of also people aren't what you what they appear to be. Mm-hmm. I think that. that comes up. Um, but I guess the way that um. And this is, you know, I guess, uh, you know, watching this movie again tonight, you know, it's like I am aware of where it goes. Right. So mm-hmm. now I'm trying to it's not the same experience that you have the first time you no. watch it. No, you're trying to watch and see if anybody's giving it away. Right. Yeah. But I was also trying to keep it straight. Like who knows what and who got who into it and which and of these characters knows how much. Yeah, it's it. This movie doesn't make sense. It doesn't hold doesn't up it? under scrutiny. I don't think it does. Okay, I, haven't I think there's a couple. I mean, I haven't one. studied it enough either, but I'm just saying, like, I think there's too many moving parts here, and too many people double crossing other people. So, that, what for point it to do you work think out? Something would have not. Well, as as soon as we get to the part where they take Nev Campbell out of the movie, that's when it really falls apart. I think because they show her. So what? She just pretended to be wrapped up in this bag. Yeah. <laughs> After yep. he pulled her teeth out. Yeah. And then he carried her into the swamp. And then and what? Then let her go. And then let her go. Yeah. Or said, she was stay here. Go. Yeah. We'll leave. You yeah. Get out. Don't get eaten by a gator or bitten by a snake while you're here. Yeah. That's a stretch. And she's basically <laughs> telling him what to do. Um, and I think also we've seen every true crime thing. This is a stretch, really. Yeah. But when you but when you it watch it again, I think where it's not playing a hundred percent fair. I'm saying it's playing uh better for the first time viewer mm-hmm. is how Matt Damon reacts to stuff now knowing knowing what we know about him from the second half of the movie in moments where you know i guess those private moments right where Mm -hmm. like no one's around the character to watch what it's how he acts yeah the movie is directed to make him uh like a decent upstanding He's doing everything right, right? I would like, say so. This girl wants to come over and wash his car. It's mm-hmm. the sexiest fucking car washing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's just keep, <laughs> keeping her at a distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. can see him like, you know, it's like, okay, uh, I'm going to do this. Like, but he like, obviously just knows stop, that she's going you know? Okay, but Lock this whole scene is a setup for, you know, the, the assault that they're going to stage, right? Yeah. Okay, but this seems like a lot of rigmarole to go through to set up this claim you know what i'm saying getting a witness that it was all the for left. the girls but it was all for her point of view. it was all so she had a story to tell to back up right you know i know I mean? but yeah. i'm it seems overly complicated is what i'm saying i think they well, could have cut the out a few movie. steps you know like i think they're working mm-hmm. hard to actually mm-hmm. to make it overly complicated mm-hmm. well uh, overly complicated uh, that depends mm-hmm. i've maybe i've seen it too much to gauge that at this point because i i it fits I think. 
This whole movie has it's like ri- it's ridiculous 8, turns it doesn't it's ridiculous need. Ridiculous like, as shit. Yeah. It's but. just I'm just saying there's eight movies worth of turns in like one movie and okay. the more turns you add, the more your logic has to bear that weight and it's it that might is not very hold true. up. That is you very know? true. Yeah. Every turn you take. Yeah. Like, okay. Can well, we support let me this? ask you this because I guess this is uh I mean, I guess this is a question when you ask about this movie because you're trying to figure out, well, is it a good movie or not? Mm-hmm. Like I mean aside from your enjoyment, right? Mm-hmm. On a script construction level. And maybe as an audience just reacting to it, when a movie does this many, what do you, what would you even call it? It's like uh, you have the turn and then you f- you switch back, mm-hmm. like and everything Double crosses that you, and triple you crosses just, and yeah, everything that you stuff. thought was true is now upside down. And then a minute later, your new information comes out. This is the end of this movie, right? Where it's just right, like, yeah. ha ha, you thought it was this, but it was actually that. And then a minute later, like, ha ha, is it? Do you feel? How many of those can you take before you feel like, okay, you're just fucking jerking me around? That's, I mean, this, like, two-thirds of the way through this movie, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. By the end, I'm like, this is too much. It, <laughs> like, it's too it, much. It, it, it strains can. belief. Yes, so, yes, like, this movie strains belief a lot. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. agree, but I, it's supposed to. Like, I mean, wh- I, I don't think anybody in this... Uh, uh, really thinks that they could do this in real life I, and get away with it right no i know that's not what i'm saying right. but but what i'm saying is that you can make a a higher end movie if you remove some of these twists and make it a little more streamlined and just make it's a bunch of low quality twists instead of like a, just a few quality ones that all come together really well mm-hmm. they're just throwing everything they can out there and then what did this person double cross them what if the cop yeah, was working with every them? single and, person was yeah, involved in it but yeah. didn't know the other one was exactly. involved in it the, you know right. kind of the, thing. the problem is if you like we said if you keep doing that mm-hmm. like you start not you lose you, credibility. You, well, you can you can start to not trust the movie in a bad way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly, because you can not trust the movie in a good way and be like, right. "Oh, I don't, I don't know." But then you're just like, "Okay, uh, you're going to have people watching your movie at a certain point, and be like, all right, I don't believe this because they turned it five minutes ago. They could turn it again. Right. Yeah, so that could turn it's people like, off. Yes. I guess maybe that's it. Like you feel like uh, um, that if you added another scene to the end of the movie. You could change everything that we that we understood. <laughs> yeah. And then you could put another one on there that changed it again. And it's And that's point, how they made the movie. Yeah, they just you're kept like, adding scenes that times can undo I... the last scene. Right. It's to be amazing to see what they actually cut out of this movie. Yeah. yeah because it's a miracle this makes as much sense as it does, honestly. Because editing could destroy this. It's a house of cards with this movie. Yeah. Editing yeah. pulls out a couple key scenes and this whole movie comes down. That's why so, I wonder, like on the on the scripting and... level and on the direction level, you know, I mean, again, we'd have to watch it uh, several more times mm-hmm. actually but like okay. you know i'm sure they were keenly aware of this like how far can we actually and they get audience notes and they're like okay that one was you know mm-hmm. a step too far we gotta we gotta pull it back i'm always rem- reminded you know of the uh you know you were saying there's you can do these switchbacks and all that stuff mm-hmm. and then sometimes you you lose your credibility basic instinct um also does that to the point where up until like the final shot of the movie, that movie could have two separate resolutions that are equally valid. They mm-hmm. ba- both they back both of those up <laughs> until like the last shot, and it's like, is that cheating? You know, like right. I'm with it, I'm working on it, <laughs> I got it. You're giving me so much information or you know evidence to both uh, you know outcomes that it all is hinged on one shot making one outcome real or not. Um, this one. It's not, it, it wasn't the same sensation, I guess. It just kind of did feel like at some point it's like like a Hobbit movie, right? A Hobbit yeah. movie, you can just keep stringing these adventures along. Yeah, and, you can turn 300 pages into three three hour movies. Yeah, we just keep on adding they another just, scene. They just took the serum movies and yeah. popped it into one. Yeah. It gives you a lot of movie. It, it does. Is movie. It, it is a lot of movie. movie. Yeah. Um, so he's accused of. Uh, raping uh denise richard she mm-hmm. Kelly Van Ryan, a, yeah. of mm-hmm. sex assault and it turns out that her mom Teresa russell is a former lover yeah and involved in the town she's super rich and so she's she uh, runs this town yeah. yeah she runs the town is she she's married does she get remarried to baxter i don't think so i think he's just the lawyer is that's he just robert the lawyer ragnar the yeah, yeah. Okay. but he's I, a yeah, cutthroat yeah. lawyer yeah so sam has got to get Your Honor, his own <laughs> no, sit no, down. That was great. Sit down. Uh, so he has to get his own lawyer, and that's Bill Murray, who's a shyster, mm-hmm. but hilarious, he is, but great. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
Um, and then it turns out that uh, these girls fabricated this uh, because uh, Nev Campbell also accuses mm-hmm. him, right? Yes. But I'm, that's what I'm saying. The whole first half of the movie, like, I totally believed him. I was like, okay, he is being the victim of this. Like, somebody's lying here mm-hmm. and it's them, right? right. This mm-hmm. is not actually what happened yeah he portrays it very well too just in the conversation he has with his friend throughout the movie it's just mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter if i get cleared this sticks with you for the rest of your life and everything like he's talking about it like mm-hmm. yeah he is doing a good job acting like he did not do anything which technically he didn't the only person who kind of in you know gets a glimmer of like what's actually going on is the um so kevin bacon is the detective who's investigating he has a partner and she's the one who's like, that girl is acting. It's my gut. I think that this is fake. Right. Yeah. Right, right off the bat. Here's my question. So is Kevin Bacon and crew just here to give a seminar on sex crimes? Why are they here? Why are they here? Oh, at the school at the beginning. Yeah. yeah but, to give a but, seminar on sex crimes. And then they just stay and hang out to see if any sex crimes happen to happen? No, you just give the sex crimes talk every year. Right, but they continue class. to be involved in the movie after that is what I'm saying. Oh, it's not like they do. They're the detective that gets involved or gets assigned to. They're the detectives mm-hmm. that get inside, uh, to, assigned to this case. They're like, so we just case. told those kids about yeah. sex crimes. <laughs> God damn it. And they didn't listen. Like, like the next day. They yeah, come it's in like the for next another, day, right? Well, the next day. And then they come in for another one. Like, didn't we just. Just talk about, about this. this. Come on. Now, I'm not going to tell you again. This is the last time we're going to go over sex Stop crimes. Stop raping yeah, people. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> but it turns out that didn't happen. They actually, we find out that Nev Campbell, so she's like a kid from the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah, well, she is Nancy part. from the craft. She's for a Balk's character in the yeah, craft, basically. basically. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so she lives in a trailer park near a, a gator. They call it swamp trash, as she, as yeah, she says. Yeah, swamp, swamp trash, trash, basically. Yeah, but I guess what you don't know at this part, point in the movie. She's goddamn super genius. Yeah. Over 200 IQ? That is super genius. I mean, that like, is, but I don't think anyone's brain can hold the 200 <laughs> point IQ. I don't, she's this, a super this, genius. She'd be smarter than everyone ever. Yeah. She's smarter than everyone ever. Is this ever, a 170 but, genius? So she's way over 170. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, I think 170 was like Einstein or something. Yeah. Like, whoever it was considered. So genius. she's like the smartest person known to man. Yeah, right? we're told this in like, a, this is one of those posts, or like, is it after during the, the After the, yeah. yeah. The part Because the partner goes, you know, everyone's gone. Everyone's just disappeared out of this whole thing, like. Mm-hmm. At the end of the movie, yeah. Yeah, she's the only one left, really. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, there's so there's a line of dialogue that says this to basically explain that, yeah, Nev Campbell, it turns out, by the end of this movie, the twist uh, upon twist upon twist is that she's actually set this whole thing up yes and her motive is what money and revenge mm-hmm. because she gets revenge while also getting money what's the revenge for the revenge is on matt Dillon because she ended up um he's helped her out a few times but one time he didn't and she ended up spending six months in an institution so she's very angry about that but there was that Davy story. What the fuck was that all about? Her friend Davy was killed by Kevin Bacon. So she needed to b- see. This is what I'm talking about. This is the <laughs> unnecessary information that just clogs this movie up. Sometimes, you know, like it's just, well. So this, I much. think that is, I don't want to red st- have to red string a movie while I'm watching it. You know what you I'm saying? Red string this one. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you do. So well, yeah. she's she's trying to pull off. Pull off the heist, but also get revenge on everyone along the way. Yeah. But like, I don't give a fuck about this Davy story. It didn't happen in this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just something I think it, it gives her motive. Yeah, it gives her motive, and it plants seeds for uh, Bacon not being like a great guy and yeah. a dirty cop. I guess that's it because we don't we kind of get that impression. He's just the cop, right? Yeah. Who's mm-hmm. investigating and. <sighs> How do we break this down? But uh, you know, yeah, it's confusing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So Nev Campbell's motive is that she had a friend named Davy mm-hmm. who you know was involved in a relationship with a prostitute that Kevin Bacon, dirty cop, was involved in, right. and he killed Davy. Right. This right. is all exposition dumped it. on us, just like yeah. this. Yeah. Right. But this serves as her motivation. So her whole thing is like, I'm going to get that dirty cop, but. She's also friends with Matt Damon and be- or Dylan. Matt Damon, Matt Dylan, and because he wasn't there for her, she ends up surveilling him and finds out that he's sleeping with Denise Richards, yes. and so gets so she's got uh, uh, leverage on him. Yes, and so they she's were like, together okay, before the beginning of the movie. Yes, yes, mm. 
And so, which makes his act even more impressive. Yes. Mm-hmm. So now she's like, okay, fine. I can use this guy, right? Leverage. And we're going to get the dirty cop. But in the process, we're also going to take down a big score because he's screwing the daughter of the woman who like runs the town, ta- whose finances run the town. Yep. Right. So yep. we have, so Susie starts it. That's Nev Campbell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and so that's gets, the whole plan. She gets Bill Murray involved because he's her defender in on that case that we don't see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Right. See, see more confusing and information. It's not necessarily is brought important. into it. And then Kevin Bacon is brought into it. So at that point, It's just the way everyone plays it because they think they're in charge and then Denise Richards comes in and they think they're planning it against Lombardo, but actually he's, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because every, everybody yeah. seems to think that they're actually the one who in, in it's control. their idea. Yes. Yeah, they this think is they're her in control. genius, mm-hmm. right? Yes, is that she's pulling strings behind the scenes, but everybody thinks it's actually their idea. Yeah. So uh, Lombardo, like this is like the first whole half of this movie mm-hmm. is like the screws tightening. The guy loses his job and all this other stuff. Yep, his house, you know, because the uh, Van Ryan woman is in charge of the bank. You know, she's on the board of directors, and so uh, it all falls apart in the courtroom scene under mm-hmm. cross examination because uh, Nev Campbell admits that this was all a fake thing, and so the girls throw shit at each other and mm-hmm. blah blah blah. Then later. It turns out they meet up at a hotel, and bam, it turns out, yep, they all know each other. Yep. We're, like, shocked and surprised. Well, mm-hmm. And then there's a hot threesome that well, takes place. Well, it's the Everglades. It's hot and sweaty. She's got the <laughs> yeah. clothes off. Yep. The magnitude of this scene on, okay. Anyway, so. The reverberations <laughs> are still felt <laughs> yeah. today. Yep. <laughs> um, Inspired so many mm-hmm. that came after. And four sequels. Um, mm-hmm. So then. Yeah. Kevin Bacon, I think, becomes then the he, yes. central character of the second half of the movie. Because he's shouting from like the from high atop the mountain that this is they set him up and they got away with it. Like mm-hmm. they fooled us. They got us. Yeah. And he's like, I know these three people are in on it. And this whole thing was a swindle. How does he know this? Because Nev Campbell has told him this is the grift. This is what mm-hmm. we're doing. Or no, she has it. Matt Dillon Matt did. Dillon has. Right? Yes. <laughs> Under the guidance of Nev Campbell, mm-hmm. that this is what's going on. So they're actually in cahoots, right? Like so this whole thing. At this point, is all his attention... Because it does. he plays it like he doesn't know this. Doesn't know what? That Kevin Bacon doesn't know. Because Matt Dillon would have filled him in on... Again, trying to figure out who knows what when. Yeah. When Kevin Bacon is putting so much attention onto this case, he's involved at that point, right? He's he's the second person to get involved in this after Matt Dillon, right? Way yeah. early on. Yeah. Okay. Matt so Dillon just, tells him, like, we're going to get that girl who's been giving you all that fucking grief, right. Susie, mm-hmm. Nev Campbell, right? Yeah. You're We're going to kill her yes. as part of this. And, and uh, Kevin Bacon's like, I'm in. Yeah. yeah. Right? And so he's actually running this. So a lot of the thing is a perform. Most of his stuff is a performance for his partner and the state's attorney or district attorney. Yeah, who's running the case. But why put so much attention on it? Uh, he, here's if the you're thing. trying to get away with it, why keep pointing the finger at it? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Why not be, yeah. Why not be quiet? Why not, about it especially and the, let it go. The point where they're like, there is no case anymore. Stop yeah. looking into it. Yeah, like, yeah. Why is he not playing the part here? Like, this, yeah, that seems. Like why is it benefiting him to? keep investigating a case that is closed you right know? It, and and something that if it's part of the bigger trying to get away with something like yeah why keep pointing why yeah keep pointing? that doesn't make any sense what it does is it see, it's for he, us well, no 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 it, it isn't he thinks that drawing this attention to the case right is going to force these three people into a corner while where two of them will kill the third one because okay. that's what he wants he right. wants Susie to get killed and he's like, uh, Denise That's- Richards and Matt Dillon are going to kill her, right? Because if I keep investigating and keep on, you know, mm-hmm. working like, on Susie. Yeah. 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 So they, they get eight and a half million dollars from the trust that set up for Kelly, but she won't get till her mom dies. Yeah. And okay, there's <laughs> this is the, the problem when you start talking movie math and numbers, right? So Nev Campbell says, like, what's eight million and a half divided three ways? And then Matt Dillon talks about taking it to the bank, but he had to go to a different bank because her mom was on the board of the trustees at the bank. Yep. Okay, is he depositing all eight and a half million in his bank? 
Because if he's not, isn't that going to look suspicious? I think he de- deposited it in the, the Cayman Islands account. Yeah, an mm-hmm. offshore account, as they yeah. say. Yeah, and he's buying an mm-hmm. island, and he's buying a big-ass boat, and he's doing all this <laughs> right, stuff. Right, but <laughs> but if, it, if the whole point of this was that all three of them were going to split this money, I he has waiting. to be able to... He, he, the government and everybody, as far as I know, that paper he signed, he got the eight and a half million. Got, and yeah, his, yeah. So if he has to cover his ass and make sure it always looks like he has eight and a half million dollars, otherwise, if it's all of a sudden he's got, you know, two and a half, whatever. Well, I imagine he's going to go to the island yeah. and then he's outside of any mm-hmm. kind of yeah. financial mm-hmm. jurisdiction and then he just mm-hmm. gives it to somebody else right. or whatever. Because I but guess this is the problem when you put these numbers in the movie like yeah. this, you're leaving little breadcrumbs that might not add up. I've always wanted a bank account in Caymans. Mm hmm. I know. One day if I'm I was actually thinking that while we were watching this, I'm like, who do you call? You yeah. know, like, yeah, if I have eight million dollars yeah. right now, how do I? You know, you're yeah. like, uh, somebody you, knows somebody. Cayman Islands? Are you right? Yeah, I, I'm looking for the Cayman number Islands. Also, if I were him, the first thing I would be doing is hiring personal security. Yeah. First thing I'm doing because, like, Kelly's mom doesn't know about this whole thing. She's still going to try and kill me. Mm-hmm. So I need at least bodyguards just to make sure I can see this through. Yeah, she's sending the pool boy. There. Yeah, yeah she sends the pool, pool boy to run him off the road. Yeah, and then he tries jealous. to, and then he asks if they're cool later on. No, dude, you tried to murder me. We are not cool. We will never this be cool. Is very. Um, I was he saying, I'll see you later. I thought yeah. that was yeah. it. It was like yeah. he was like, I'll see you later. Yeah, and that was a, like I'm still gonna fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I, you like you're making a threat in the lawyer's office. Yeah, yeah. it's like what? Um, and yeah, that just, was why he was there. I just didn't understand to be. Yeah, why it. was he in the lawyer's Maybe office? Maybe he played a bigger part in the cutout. Because I think yeah. he's he's uh, Van Horns, Van Ryan's, Van whatever. Ryan's mm-hmm. Sex boy. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. but and why is the- he's pissed because she even knows that like Matt Dillon could turn her crank more than the pool boy. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm going to, mm-hmm. I, I don't care. I'm going to kill him anyway. Right. You know? <laughs> so, Very interesting. Crime of gonna, fashion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as Kevin Bacon knows, Susie is killed by yes. uh, Denise Richards and uh, Matt Dillon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Turns out that she hasn't been surprised for the end of the so movie. Did he, did he just hit a watermelon with a champagne bottle a bunch? Like what, what's the fake blood situation? They explain the teeth, but nothing else. Yeah. Because there's some evidence at the crime scene that suggests it, but they're it also planting teeth. this, so it looks like, <laughs> like uh, that scene was horrifying. I mean, right when they uh, yeah, just pulling the crunching, them out with pliers, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe a finger or something like teeth. blood. Just put some blood on a on a rock, man. That's a, just cut your hand and put some blood on a rock. That's all you gotta do. This is it dedication seem, it, to making sure that somebody's going down for this. It really is. Yeah, but and she does her front how, teeth, but, dude. Don't do your front teeth. Okay, so he would know where to go look. Because Matt, Matt Dillon, Dillon would told tell him. him. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing that he wasn't supposed to do, apparently, is kill Denise Richards, which he does yeah. because yeah. we know that, like, he kills, you know, innocent bystanders or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like part of his MO. He's a dirty cop. No loose ends. So he kills her. And that throws, I don't even know if that throws the plan off because I think Nev Campbell always wanted just her, oh, Nev yeah. Campbell, to like be the would've... only one surviving. So she knows. That he's going to kill him. <laughs> it's like... Matt so, Dillon's pissed, but Nev Campbell's cool with it. You know that the cold open of The Dark Knight when all the bank robbers t- pick each other off until the Joker's the only one left with the hall? Yeah. <laughs> That's like what this movie's trying to do, but yeah. it's 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 not at that linear at all. It's not as streamlined as that scene No, is. because... No, it's I not, think, because that's, yeah. yeah. Because the end of the movie, like, during the credits, it is still giving you these scenes that are explaining, like, oh, that's this is That's a great sign happened. of a movie. We have to, in the credits, explain the movie you just watched. <laughs> well, I don't... Not a good I, look. I, I wouldn't... You could get away with this movie without those scenes i think you? so yeah that's why i think it's stupid to put it. i i think that they don't have confidence in it and that's why it's in there well, i, I think they feel like they need like, to explain that all well i think it's more of like it, looking behind the curtain it's like this is how they did it yeah i think yeah i, I mean i guess that's how i took it you're right but though now i'm considering like what would it been if it just ended with her on the boat sailing mm-hmm. the boat right. off and you're like okay she did and then but in the end credits it's like i mean do you really get any information that you didn't already know we know that i guess well we yeah because we know that they were having sex before the movie even started matt dylan and denise Richards. but 
you can intuit that. Yeah, is it is it important to know that? Like, right. Important? It's just like this is the scene no, where she got think... the drop on Matt Dillon. Yeah, I don't think necessarily they're all important, but I, I like the that they 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 kind of round out. The yeah, entire I think I like... the way it's presented makes it feel like an afterthought and like you don't have confidence. So like putting it in the end credits, like and cut like that feels. And it was just keeping people. I mean, yeah. I know what it did to me. It was like I can't leave now. The credits are rolling because uh. I have to see like yeah, you know, and I think it would mid scene. It's hacky. And it's played out, but I think a better way to do it would be you have the villain explain their evil plan, and you cut to these as like fla- flash, quote unquote, flashbacks mm. during that See, that monologue. You know. See, I've seen that too much. I like, but at least that's her. a narrative in the movie and not an afterthought tacked on. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think it was an afterthought tacked on. But that, that's that's crazy writing then to be like we're gonna do the whole movie and then in the credits like b- like a blooper reel we're gonna show you these now important I scenes oh, like, i wonder if that was in the I, writing yeah i wonder not. if it was in it's, the script now that yeah you're saying it, because how it, would you do that it's like were those scenes in the movie they cut them I out i think it's edited this way i and don't they yeah. put the, they delayed them and, and stuck yeah. them in the end as kind of like easter eggs because i mean i guess the they are like all they're doing it's like a, it's the meta information of the movie right yeah, yeah. It comes during the credits they're providing context to these scenes. I wonder if they were like where they would have been in the script or if the script was just like, and then, then we show this and 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 you can put, right. I mean, did the writer say like during the credit, it would be interesting to read the actual, mm-hmm. it would be original. It feels like the way they're shot and presented that it was purposeful to have them. It does either at the end or in what you say. I feel like they were was, in the movie. Yeah. Or like, mm-hmm. but I think well, they, they may have Well, they couldn't be in the movie because... she does explain or somebody yeah, explains. Yeah, it. yeah. Back yeah. It. And they're like, we could do this. Instead. Maybe there was like a three-hour cut of this movie oh, originally. And like, this There's is... definitely an unrated cut. And some, for some reason that someone didn't want to let these scenes go, so they compromised on this, you know? Which uh, one do we watch? This is the regular, because there's more nudity in that pool scene, which was not in this movie. This is the regular cut. Oh, okay. The unrated. Oh, so in the unrated one, there's more in the... There's more of the, more of the pool scene. Oh, I think more okay, happens okay, in okay. The, There's a few other things, but there's more in the pool scene. Um, oh, there's also uh, a scene was taken out where it shows that I think Kelly and uh, Susie are half-sisters at some point. Oh, ew. Field. Right. That's also in there. That's gross. And there's a couple other things, but other than that, yeah. Really, I gotta go back and watch that uh, unrated version again because I I wasn't sure when we were watching, but I guess yeah, it was the no, yeah, that rated was, one. That was the, yeah, on this was definitely the Amazon. R-rated. Um, I did like during the end scene the one thing. It, yeah, it's it's extraneous character stuff, but I like that Matt Dillon's squeamish about like he's the guy <laughs> who's like I do supposed like to have done yeah. all this stuff, and it turns out he's like squeamish about you know mm-hmm. pulling teeth, pulling right. teeth Yeah, because you could see him just like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, as much as we did. Yeah, it was yeah. awful. It. Yeah. No, who would want to? Uh, and it's like uh, no, she's have- the one who's she's fucking hardcore. Yeah. Right. You know? What do you got to have in you to yank some alive, yank yeah. someone's teeth out? She's a genius dead. and a psychopath. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dangerous guy. Combination. Yeah, and she goes for her front teeth, girl. Yeah. Don't do the front teeth. Oh, like, but she's like, I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna get this. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna yeah. get it fixed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, the the movie haircut. switches again in perspective. I think at the very end, but not for very long. To the partner who is basically the one. She I can't remember her name. It's Daphne Daphne, Daphne something, something Vega. Vega. Yeah. And oh. she was um she was one of the original Broadway stars of Rent. Because oh. wasn't Tay Diggs also? Yes. Isn't where he comes mm-hmm. from Rent. Um, Effie Ruben Vega. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think like she ever really had much of a film career. Shocker, after. man. Based well, on this performance. Be, see, I guess, you know, listening to you, you know, <laughs> like say, you know, that she yeah. was unemotive. I, I can see how she comes across that way. I guess I didn't have the same problem with it, but mm-hmm. I think probably movie executives could go like, you know, she I might. think it doesn't help everyone else in this movie is so loud, you know, yeah. and they're and no, she yeah. is very, and, and she's m- much more muted in comparison. And there's a scene where, like, I mean, because Matt Dillon basically seduces every woman in this movie, but mm-hmm. there is a scene where he actually tries to seduce the cop. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I mean, the way that she plays that scene is very like, you, there's no, they never give you that scene where, like, it, when he leaves the room. That she's like, you know, all steely eyed. Then he leaves and the door closes and she's like, <sighs> yeah, you know? yeah, they don't give you that. So right. I think that, you know, and maybe that was in maybe the acting it. Yeah. and it was cut out, you know, so we read it as like, okay, so how did she react to that? You can't I really. Couldn't, yeah, I did, felt like I could never get a read on her in any situation. And I feel like that's why her dialogue is literally her saying what maybe. she's thinking. <laughs> I like her. 
That's all I got. Yeah. I, mean, I liked her okay in this, but mm-hmm. you know, if you want to see her in something else, I guess is the she where watch her in the heights path, apparently. Right? Oh, okay, oh, yeah. okay. So, so she's a musical there. person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess so yeah, yeah. Maybe she's a good singer and dancer, and that's where she should. Maybe keep that's it. where she's. Yeah. At. Yeah. Um. I don't know, we're running uh, kind of close to time here, but... Uh, I feel like we were forgetting so much, but this, it's because this movie's so dense. But, and, like, and, just, and we're assuming that you, the listener, have, have yeah. seen it. And I, that, yes. Let, yeah. Let's just uh, take a moment to appreciate Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. we're good. <laughs> just wanted to get that in yep. there, because he's. I think he's great in this movie. Yeah, he's he is great. making his choices. He's eating leaves off plants. He's rubbing contracts all over his it's body. It's nice to see him have some energy. Like, yeah. I feel like I haven't to, seen him have energy in a like long time. He is enjoying what he's doing yeah. at the moment. Yeah. That's nice. And not yeah. miserable. Yeah. 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 Because that's where we think of him now. I think. He's, he's <laughs> had miserable he's, energy he's, for he's a while now. now. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. That's just, sorry, Bill. That's just the feeling we had to yeah. get for you. But, yeah. Yeah. but not here. Out. There's still vitality in, in Bill Murray. There he is. <laughs> Go back and listen to whatever episode the Bill Murray story was on. I forgot. Maybe it was Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. Maybe. All right, but we're saying it's not necessarily a Skinamax movie. Bill Murray had his own threesome that night. Holy shit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I mean, it seems like, so I mean, is there as much sex and nudity in the movie as you th- no. think there is? No. <laughs> My memory was There's... a little more. I think there was a. a... I, think, I think the sensual in the, in the Amazon Prime description is correct. Yeah. Because yes. it is a lot of like swimsuit shots and like yes. wet t-shirt stuff and. Yeah. A lot of like, yes, essential. We'll call that atmosphere. Yeah, a- atmospheric there's sensuality. Sensual, yes, there's an at- the atmospheric sensuality. Yeah. Well, you can feel it. Like, it's like the heat in Florida. Yeah. It's yeah. Like you're walking. Well, that's like, it. so when they do the car wash at his house <laughs> and she's wearing that white outfit and it gets all wet, I, I was part of me was just like, that's just from the humidity outside. That's, yeah, not, yeah, from yeah, the, yeah, that's not from the car wash. That's just being outside in <laughs> yeah. Florida. Because she got wetter when she went back inside. Yeah, well, she, she was did. like drying off. Yeah. And like, Denise wow. Richards gets out of a pool. Like yep. no one's ever gotten out of a pool. Yep. Really yeah, no. Nice. And then dabs herself off. Not since yep. Bo Derek. Yeah. But I guess, okay, going back to what I said, Mikhail, I don't mean to put you on the spot you no get out of this but you know like i guess if i'm if i'm thinking that the movie especially like those yeah. car wash shots yeah. and stuff like that it's like it, that shot from a guy oh that's a male perspective yeah yeah, yeah yes, the male gaze is prominent yeah. in this movie. but is that offensive in the context of this of the movie i mean or what it's going for is I, does it read as sexy or does it read as exploitive um i think it is exploitive. I don't know. It is it. It is exploitive, but I'm okay with it if it makes sense. Like I, I know what it's do. I, I feel like this movie's upfront about what it is. It doesn't try to deceive you, right? Like it says, like you're in for a, sen- a sensual, right. like yes. sleazy movie, yeah. right? No, so yeah. like yeah. I think it's it, it. I think because it owns what it is and it knows what it is, it's self aware. It's okay. It's when movies. Like if this movie were to try to be like an A twenty four Oscar movie, you'd be like, "Oh fuck off!" Like, come on, like, like own what you are and take pride in what you are. And this movie, yeah. I feel like, does have pride in what it is, and that's why it, so. why it works. And yeah. like, it does have a charm to it. Like, the actors are fantastic and charismatic, and I think that sells it more too. I think if everyone looked visibly uncomfortable, and like they didn't want to be there, it'd be a completely different mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. But but everyone seems to be uh, along for the ride. Yeah, and yeah. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which hell? Yeah. All those things have to come together in a way that make it work i think but and this okay. one it does yeah we're saying it's sexy yeah oh it's i sexy. think so <laughs> just hot. everyone in this movie's hot it's just hot everyone's in the movie yeah, everyone's, right. everyone's hot everyone's in this movie. at a good age yeah everyone looks good. everyone looks great in this movie mm-hmm. robert wagner is the worst looking person in this he movie. is <laughs> he is yes <laughs> I'm going to say, was he ever a sex symbol back in the heart? Yeah, I'm sure he I'm was. Sure. Well, Stephanie so. Zimbalist, yeah. wasn't yeah. she on, this, on the show with him? Sorry. I was, uh, I was like, oh, all I know <laughs> is he murdered Natalie Wood, you know? Oh, <laughs> I can't say oh, that. Allegedly. 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 Yes, we have to throw We don't even have that. This podcast is satire. Allegedly. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, so uh, that's Wild Things. We're going to go around the table, <laughs> table and tell you whether or not we would recommend that you watch it. And um, would you put it on your... Your horny Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Horny Mount Rushmore. Where, uh, yeah. Would, do you have a horny Mount Rushmore? Do you have a horny mountain range? Where does this rank in horny mountain hood? Yeah. How, big is, how big is your horny mountain? Yeah. Is that how we're rating this? Okay. We're going to find yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, it's an Four horny mountains. Yeah. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. This better be sexy, Igor. 
This better be sexy mail. He just like sprays down the mail with like an old perfume bottle. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like, smell sexy, Sean. It's got sexy netting yeah. on it. Oh From my god, sexy <laughs> netting. Yep. Well, Which was needed in this movie. Yeah, yeah. How was there not any sexy? These people yeah. don't know how to live in Florida appropriately, no. right? No, there's mosquitoes. I, there was all one place. mosquito in this movie. <laughs> I call bullshit. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, um, we should probably remind you again if you want to participate on this interactive portion of our show, you can contact us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Are, about, there, are there any of those where they shouldn't send their movie recommendations? Uh, we What's can get the them on place? all of them. We, okay. we, we said all of them at the That's beginning. Right. So we, yep. I commit to that now. Okay. <laughs> Um, about tonight's movie, Wild Things, Appaliva writes in and says, ooh, salaciously good. More yes. than just the skin romp. Yes. Yeah. Uh, G Money says it's such a sleazy looking and feeling movie. There's an entire, well, he says penis, but it's P-E-N-I-5 episode. Well, yeah, because you got you know to watch this. You got to watch the sensor. It's getting right. around keyword search. On okay. Social, so, so, so wait, what's social- your He's saying penis, but social. Sometimes you have to edit yeah. the yeah, way you spell things. It's but it's an episode. I don't know if it's a uh, YouTube Pen show. Pen fifteen, the TV Pen show, oh, okay. the Netflix yes. show. Okay. Pen fifteen. So there's an entire Pen fifteen episode dedicated to this movie that really nails what it was like when this I'm came have to watch out. Watch that and highly recommended for a good laugh. Holy shit! I gonna, watch that. that was like that sounds like my childhood. Sounds, I was trying to describe. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like well, well the show. Episode. If you don't know the show, it's too. I don't know the show, so I oh. apologize. Oh, no, no, that's, that's fine. It's the it's um the two creators and writers. They're um uh, comedians, but they're playing like the high school versions of themselves. Mm-hmm. And they're and it's about like they're growing up, and it's real awkward, but it's a comedy and everything. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's and there's an episode. Good. To yeah, because there it's, thing, there so there is like the late nineties, early two thousands when they're in high school. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so right. it's regular looking older, not older women. I'm sure mm-hmm. they're in their like late 20s or early 30s but them them dress down as like they have bad braces and greasy hair and it's just it it's it's a funny way to do it like they mm-hmm. do it really well okay i recommend right. it uh travis legler says what i remember most about this movie is the cast uh, <laughs> bill murray a very specific scene nev campbell kevin bacon matt dillon i remember seeing this and thinking i'm a little young to be seeing this but i, I didn't I, stop yeah. watching Same. i thought that tonight yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think was, i might be a little too young for that i started thinking like god i hope my mom doesn't know what movie we're watching yeah, the yeah, yeah. This week. now they're listening I, to this yeah I've, probably I've, I've definitely watched this with my dad Woo, mm-hmm. we gotta cool off mm-hmm. uh travis says my young brain just kept saying man peter venkman got into some weird stuff when he stopped wearing a proton pack <laughs> He's looking forward to this episode. Uh, Steve Carney says, I watched Wild Things on Tubi a year or two ago. It was okay. I remember a few good twists, Bill Murray and Kevin Bacon's junk. The rewatch value isn't really there for me. The characters were unlikable, and it's definitely a movie set in Florida, but it was nowhere near (laughs) as bad as something like Natural Born Killers. True Romance is still the ultimate 90s crime movie for me. I that, love that subtle jam at Florida. Right. It's definitely yeah. a movie that's in Florida. Hey, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which, if you don't know, there's just no other word to describe Florida other than it's just Florida. You just, it's Florida. it's yeah, hard it's, to just describe. Look at it, it's like it's an Florida. enigma, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, oh my God, as a younger man, I was strong armed a bit to go to some movie with my sister's boyfriend that I had zero interest in. I snuck out halfway through and caught the end of this movie Uh. that I was more interested in for obvious reasons. Don't judge me. I was 17. And honestly, because I missed the first half of this movie, I didn't quite find it all that entertaining. I thought you were going to say you left Wild Things like yeah. to go see another movie, <laughs> yeah, no. and I was going to be like, "What part did you walk out at?" Was what I thought. I'm more curious what part you walked into. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. if you walked into that scene, you'd be like, "Holy shit, what Jesus. is this?" Movie? Yeah. Uh, Jimbo you show porn at the theater now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, this is like New York. Yeah. Jimbo Ice says the '90s sure seemed like a high water mark for erotica thrillers. Mm-hmm. I remember this one being boring and frustrating, but that's possibly because I was a teen expecting rampant nudity and instead got some mishmash of annoying characters and confusing plotting. Everyone is a shithead in this movie. Yeah, that is true. Really there is not really anybody like. By the end of it, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. everybody. And you really do think there is rampant nudity in this movie. If there's not, but yeah, it's you that you Roger really Corman it. rule, right? Yeah. If you show what was it, three scenes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And I think there were. I think yeah. so. I think because there was Teresa Russell, there yep. was the threesome, and then there was the pool the scene. Pool scene and yeah. I think that's Which is longer. It. Yeah. yeah. But you think there's more. But they're always talking about it like sex is a topic. Right. 
in this movie. And then um, you got the stuff that's like on the sensual line, like the car wash and yeah. pool, yeah. the yeah. daytime yeah. pool scene. Yeah, it's a slow like motion the pool scene. Yeah, the cheerleading. cheerleading. Yeah. yeah. Um, last week we watched a movie that was called Enter the Dragon, mm-hmm. and what's next? Writes in and says Jackie Chan is also in Enter the Dragon. He was a stuntman extra, and he has about three seconds on the sc- on the screen. Ooh, Ooh didn't know that. No. Uh, and both movie bacon and super sweet shirts write in and say, man, you come right out of a comic book, which is a line <laughs> from <laughs> written by bacon. What a movie bacon, movie bacon, movie bacon. like this movie. You've had some movie bacon, movie bacon. <laughs> we got, movie we, we bacon got some movie tonight. bacon tonight. Yeah. yeah. Movie bacon tonight. The whole hog. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Sean's like, the she, hog, his yeah. friends. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're going to go around the table. We're going to tell you if you should watch tonight's movie, Wild Things, starting with Kayla. What did you think about tonight's movie, Wild Things? I mean, it's I feel like for me, it's like a mandatory coming of age movie. It's the it's the movie that, you know, you shouldn't be watching and that's why you want to watch it. And maybe the thrill of that makes it better. Yeah, Um, there was definitely some um, like, is mom mom and dad coming? Okay, no. You got to have that last channel. You finger on the last channel channel button. button. The previous channel button was your best friend. You got to stay on it and you got to keep it something neutral. Like, I don't know, fucking weather channel or something. Right. You know, (laughs) Baywatch real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) They'll just think I'm being regular creepy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, and I I watched this as a slumber party as a kid, and it was just like, every minute I was watching it, I was like, I'm not supposed to be watching this, (laughs) and that's why it's awesome, you know? Like, and... I mean, I've always loved Nev Campbell. I've always wanted to be her. Her fashion in this movie was like, I was really inspired by as a kid. I loved the goth look and the cut off shorts and the tank tops. Loved it. Um, And the docks with them, too. And (laughs) I always loved Denise Richards, too. I love, love, love Denise Richards. I always have. I know she's not the best actress, but maybe this movie is her best work. Maybe it's up there. It's she's really good in this. I think Um, Starship Troopers and I better in this than Starship Troopers. I think so. Yeah. And have we. Did we not do that movie? Sorry. No. On this show? Um, nope. Yeah. Mm, shit. Um, so, and I watched The Real Housewives a lot, and Denise Richards right. was on two seasons of The Real Housewives, and, like, the nuggets she'll just drop about her life casually and say, like, it's no big deal are wild. Like, she, <laughs> they were talking about Thanksgiving offhand once, and she said that when her and Charlie were first splitting up and they had shared custody of the kids, he was supposed to come drop off the kids for Thanksgiving, and she thought he would come and, like, maybe stay for dinner or something, but he pulled up, and he, like, literally honked the horn and, like, dumped the kids out, and she was like, what the fuck? So she, he, she's like, at least come inside, and he's like, I can't. Can't. She's like, why not? And she, he's like, I, I have a lady in the car, and he had a prostitute in the car. And Denise was like, well, just bring her in, and she can eat dinner with us. And that's how Denise Richards had Thanksgiving with her ex husband and his prostitute. <laughs> and she said that like it was like a normal thing, and like I well, think when, it was when, a when normal thing. Yeah, in her life. yeah. yeah. Charlie Sheen and yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the way she talks about it, she talks Casually. about like folding your laundry, you know, yeah, like. And she was yeah. like, so I said, come in, I'll fix her a plate, you it's know, like. Still it's, crazy that those two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like they they were married and had yeah. kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have, two, they have two That's kids. Fucking crazy. Man. Yeah. Well, it gets even crazier because then when he when he split up with her and then he got with Brooke Mueller and they got way into right. drugs. Denise Richards actually had custody of his kids with Brooke Mueller for a while uh. because they were both so fucked up. And so she took in kids that weren't even hers. Sure. So I love her, and I mean, yeah, I know she's not the best, but I always enjoy seeing her, and she's just like she has this like effortless, like pouty girl look that is just like. Like everyone in Hollywood wants her nose. Everyone's trying to get her, her nose. nose. Her lips. Yeah, and mm. and it's just and she's from Illinois. She's from not far oh. around here. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you gotta watch it. It's a rite of passage movie. It's it's got dong in it. It's got a threesome in it with famous people. But I think this cast makes the movie what it is. I think you don't have this cast and you don't have this movie. So. Um, yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're really waiting for because you're missing out on a lot of cultural zeitgeist yeah. like information. So, yeah, you got to watch it, Colin. Because you can go up to him and go, Wild Things. And be like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wild yeah. Things. Yeah. That yeah. That's all you got to say. Yeah. It's a very hot movie. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I don't know if I'd call it sleazy. Um, mm, no I, teenagers. It's pretty sleazy. Yeah, maybe, but I've it's seen a lot trashy. of uh, Italian it's movies. It's trashy a level. Uh, right. Yeah, all right. This so man I'm going to go, it's very, yeah, it's very sultry. It's a sultry movie. Maybe <laughs> I'm going to use that in place mama of, from the train. of sleaze. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, I mean, part of the appeal of it was Denise Richards is in the movie and she, oh, that's right. I forgot. Tomorrow Never Dies. Or oh, no, yeah. it was a day, uh, Die Another Day. I no. So. 
<laughs> what was it called? The world is not enough. Oh, there we yeah. go. Um, that's right. She was in that. But wasn't yeah, she Christmas? She, Christmas, Christmas comes. Christmas, yeah, Christmas <laughs> galore, right? No, Christmas. <laughs> Christmas galore. No, it was Christmas was something. Christmas, Christmas Jones. Jones? Christmas, Christmas Jones. Jones. Yeah. I used to play as her character in the video game. Oh right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, she uh, definitely has a look, and uh, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm sure. Uh, is Mr. Skin still around? I mean, this has got to be right. She's got to be uh, like. Uh, it's also uh, just Google because of this movie. Um, the most searched on Mr. Who's the yeah. most searched on Mr. Skin? Well, you I think mean, she's like, got to be right up there. If you Google this movie, as I was preparing to put our social media stuff together, like it's all the the you, you know you shouldn't Google wild things at work. Yeah, no, don't. It's either the the threesome or the pool scene. Um, you know, um, I thought it was. Well put together. I mean, you know, I'm I'm saying uh, this is like a pretty well directed movie. It has a nice style. The atmosphere is thick and palpable. It has this kind of um, just that scene, like you know, where she goes into Kevin or uh, Matt Dillon's house, right? Mm -hmm. And then she's all dripping wet, you know. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "I got the ticket," and then it fades out, and then mm -hmm. it fades up. And her coming out of the house all disheveled. And I'm like, this is like an Alfred Hitchcock moment or something. It's yeah. like it has this kind of construction to it where it is leading you exactly, you know, to think what it wants you to be thinking at any point in the in the movie. Um, it's the Florida Noir. Of I almost think it's like it's John. I mean, I don't know. Is it John McNaughton's best movie? Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer definitely like makes an impression, but right. I think this one also makes an impression and is probably, you know, obviously it's a lot more I'm accessible, impressed. but yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd recommend this movie. You got to see it. This is, uh, uh, I guess I didn't think of it as the, one of the nineties erotic thrillers, but it, it totally is. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm bringing it back. Colin. Yeah, there you go. I don't want people to forget about this. That's right. I don't think anyone's going to forget about wild things. Make sure. I don't think it's in danger of, of disappearing. <laughs> Bring them back. Yeah. I think there's like, we're waiting for that 90s, uh, like indie renaissance to happen again. Yeah, I think yeah. it's going to, it's going to be blowback from all the like Marvel movies. All of a sudden there's going to be the An rise of the next mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino and everybody likes indie movies. And then eventually there'll be the erotic thrillers again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, cause they'll start in the indie movies, right? And yes. I don't know. We'll see. And they'll um, be big in the indies and then the mainstream will be like, well, we should yeah, do that too. I suppose it's probably on Netflix. You can see stuff like this all the time. Probably. Who knows? I haven't been paying attention. So, uh, I would, <laughs> for this long way, I would recommend, Wild things for sure. Sean, what'd you think? Uh, I mean, it's wild things. Like I said, mm -hmm. you just walk up to people and go, wild things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of, it's like the lasting legacy of this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I like um, uh, I like this movie very much. I haven't watched it in a long time. I also don't think it's, this is not a once a year watch or anything like that. You got to give it some time before you go into the next watch. But this, just the cast, the, I really do love the score. It really gives like, it, it's, it's like it's flowing underneath this movie. It adds to the Florida of it. It really the mm, mm -hmm. yeah, it really does. Um yeah, the twists and turns I've always liked. I mean, there's also a few key scenes that obviously <laughs> There was a couple of uh, parts in the dog. VHS tape where the tracking was worn yeah. out. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just like fucking goddamn yeah. it. No. Um but I mean, yeah, it is uh it is um yeah, it's one of the best like, you know, erotic those. It is twisty and turny. Um it can, I mean, that could work against it. At some point in the movie. Um, yeah, I like a lot about this movie. Bill Murray, man. Love what Bill Murray's doing in this movie. Uh, yeah, I recommend Wild Things. You, If you haven't watched it, uh, show it to your kids. Watch it again. Like, <laughs> everyone, everyone should see this movie. Um, yeah, I, I recommend Wild Things. I think uh, I want to make sure nobody forgets it. All right. Well, that's uh, Freak Show approved. So if you've made it this far, that means you're contractually obligated to watch mm -hmm. Wild Things. And Wild Things 2, 3, and 4. <laughs> you go watch Wild, Wild Things, things Force. Force you go some. watch the fourth one and tell me how it is. I think they all take place in the same school or in the same town. I think so. Somehow. A lot of what I read says that it recycles a lot of what So the school is cursed movie. is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's like, that's the this. third teacher in three years. Been accused of that. <laughs> yeah. We got a problem. Um, all right. So uh, don't forget to go to our social media and submit your suggestions for our listener choice month. Yes. We're going to do that in January. Um, but before then, we're going to watch another movie, and that movie is going to be chosen by... Holly has decided it's the holiday season, so we're going to watch To All a Good Night from 1980. Holy crap, I don't even know about it, this. It looks like a Christmas horror movie based on the poster. To All, all right. a Good to Night. All you'll a good scream, night. You'll scream till dawn. 
Okay. I mean, we are plumbing the depths of Christmas horror at this I point. I think but. so. And we still haven't watched. Did we watch Christmas Evil? I don't think we I watched it. Did we do it on the show? I don't think we did. No one made me watch that David Harbour one coming out. Please, God. Violent okay. Night. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, what was it called? <laughs> to All a Good to Night. To All a Good Night good is night. our next movie. Hopefully we can find it on a service to watch. <laughs> I'm sure she checked that out. And you'll, uh, you can follow along. Uh, but until then, Yule, like, Yule, yeah. Yule. There you go. That was totally on purpose. So until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.